in your own Torah Muslim. So uh, this man then asked the Prophet وسلم, about the signs of the last day. The signs of the last day. And the Prophet sorry, he asked the man about the last day. Tell me about the last day. And the Prophet وسلم, said to him, I don't know. The, 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 the person you are asking does not know more than the person you are asking does not know more than the person who is asking. So, uh, i.e., the Prophet ﷺ is saying to him, I don't know when the sounds are going to be. So then this man asked another question. He said to him, Tell me about the signs then. Don't tell me about, if you don't know the timing of the sa'a, tell me about the signs of the last day. The Prophet ﷺ said to him that you will see the, 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 the female servant gives birth to her master and let you see the destitute, naked, barefoot shepherds competing to establish the high rises. So this man then left and the Prophet وسلم, said to Umar, O oh, Umar, do you know who is asking? Umar said to him, Allah Rasulullah, Allah and his messenger knows best. He said, this is Jibreel came to teach you your deen. Allah So this hadith obviously is a uh, Foundation of, as we said, Iman, Islam, and uh, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And this hadith is uh, narrated by Imam Muslim. And the story of this hadith came about when um, um, one of the narrators of the hadith, of the hadith met Abdullah ibn Umar. He met Abdullah ibn Umar and he asked Abdullah ibn Umar about a person by the name of Mu'bad Mu'bad al Juhanain. Mu'bad al Juhanain was the first person at the time of the Sahaba. He is not the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but the time of the Sahaba. That he used to talk about al Qadr, used to talk about fate, and this was the establishment of a firqa, a special group that was called al Qadariya. And what al Qadariya claimed to, to say is that Allah subhanahu wa taala does not know what the people are going to do until the people are actually doing the, this, the, the, the act, the deed. So they, they are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not know what people will do until they do it. Okay? And then the, the people are the, their own creators of their deeds, which is obviously against the belief of Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. They believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what every person will do before they do it. And before you do something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew. They call this al ilm al-qadim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything will happen until the day of judgment. Okay? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the free will to do whatever you want. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you will do eventually. Okay? This is... Uh, what they were denying al qadariyah So when Abdullah ibn Umar heard this, Abdullah ibn Umar said to, to them that if you hear any any person who is denying the qadr, tell them that I am innocent, that I uh, disown them, that I am innocent from what they're saying. And then he narrated this hadith to them. So this is how this hadith came about. So Abdullah ibn Umar, he heard it from his father, Umar ibn Khattab. And then when these people came to, to ask Umar, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar about this man, Umar ibn Jahani and his fitna, then um, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar narrated this hadith. And obviously this hadith, as you can see, is a, um, a, a foundation of uh, Iman from Qadr. Inshallah we'll talk about this in detail. <clears throat> now, inshallah, there are, before we talk about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the core of the hadith, I just want to highlight a couple of things. Now, this man who came um, to, in the form of Jibreel, Jibreel came, came in the form of a man. Jibreel السلام, used to come to the Prophet السلام, in the form of a man and in the form of an angel. Okay? So the Sahaba, it is reported that the Sahaba saw Jibreel alayhi salam in the form of a man as, as reported in this hadith. But we know from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw Jibreel alayhi salam in his form at least twice. At least twice in the beginning of the revelation. Obviously, 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Jibreel alayhi salam in the very first time uh, uh, when Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Ghar of Hira <coughs> and um, uh, the revelation began um, so this was the first time that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi saw Jibreel alayhi salam and this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam was so scared was so scared and shaken because imagine that you are the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is, is uh, making uh, worshiping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Ghar of Hira, which is a very dark place. And if someone has been to Mecca and went to Ghar Hira, it's actually a fair bit of climbing you have to do in order to get there. So imagine at this time there is no lights. Uh, so it was very dark. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all of a sudden seeing this being and shaking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and saying to him, Iqra. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so shaking. And then and the Prophet ﷺ ran to Khadija, and you know the story uh, that he was scared, and then Khadija said to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never let you down because of all the good qualities and all the good things that you do. So, so this is, uh, so the Prophet ﷺ saw um, uh, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam in the in angelic form, and also the Sahaba saw uh, Jibreel alayhi salam in the form of a man. It is also uh, documented in the Sunnah that the Jibreel alayhi salam used to come in the form of a Sahabi, a very handsome Sahabi by the name of Duhayl al Kandi. Okay? So these are the three uh, forms that um, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam came to, uh, to the Prophet. So this person, this, uh, this man, uh, Jibreel in the form of man, came to the Prophet and sat close to the Prophet until his knees were close to the knees of the Prophet and he put his palm palms on the thighs of the Prophet And it is from the etiquette of seeking knowledge from, from the ulama is that you sit close to the ulama. You sit close when you want to ask a alim question. Uh, is to sit close as possible so that you don't raise your voice. You know, this is the etiquette of halqat al-ilm is that when you are uh, uh, seeking knowledge is that you sit as close as possible to the alim that you are seeking knowledge from so that you're not so shouting from uh, from the end of the masjid. Um, so he came very close to the Prophet وسلم, and said to him, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. And the Prophet وسلم, said to him, Islam, This is obviously the very first fear of Islam is that you testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant, servant and messenger. To qim as salah here, establish the salah is obviously. The uh, first pillar of Islam after the Shahada. And the Salah is the difference between a Muslim and non Muslim. The ulama differ in their opinions about the person who leaves the Salah, leaves the Salah out of being laziness, out of laziness. Is this person still a Muslim or not? Tuqim al Salah established the Salah, which means that you pray, you pray the Salah al Khams on time. Okay? Now, the ulama, as I said, they differ in opinion about whether the person who leaves the salah out of being lazy is a Muslim or not. They all agree in opinion that a person who says there is no such thing as a salah, that this person is a kaf, is not a Muslim. But they differ in opinion whether the person who leaves the salah is uh, a kaf or a Muslim. Imam al-Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Imam Hanifa, through the majority of the ulama, they say that this person is still a Muslim, but he is the worst type of lowest rank of Muslims, worst type of a Muslim. And he is committing a very major sin. Some ulama are saying it's even worse than stealing and killing by leaving the salah completely. Okay? The Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and uh, his, uh, the opinion of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal is this person is not a Muslim. The person who leaves the salah out of laziness. That's why salah is so important. And if you ever meet a Muslim who does not pray, it is very important that you uh, talk to that person and try to, 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 tell, to talk to them about the grave danger that they're in. Because a person, a Muslim who does not pray, according to the ulama, is either a Muslim or non Muslim. In fact, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Um, it is of his opinion, this is obviously the position that has been adopted by you know, a lot of the Saudi scholars, 
that this person cannot even be married with the Muslims when they die. So this is very dangerous. Okay, so that's why establishing the Salah is the most important thing for a Muslim after the Shahada. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the authentic hadith, Al-Ahdu Ladi Bainana Wabinahu Salah, Faman Taraka Fakat Kafar, that the covenant between us, the difference between us and them is Salah. Whoever leaves the Salah, he is committing Kuf. So that's why Imam Hanbal and his uh, students, they are of the position that the person who does not pray, even out of laziness, is a, uh, is not a Muslim. So, why put yourself in these situations? So if you ever see someone who's not praying, <coughs> tell them that they must, you know, establish the prayer and, and give them advice because this is, uh, this person is in great danger. And especially if this person is in your immediate family, if this person is in your immediate family, your bigger family, then it is a duty for on you that you tell this person, that you tell this person about the importance of Salah. Okay? Um, and this is obviously from the Amr al Maruf, and then Yahya Mukhtar, this is very important. What to is zakah, obviously, paying zakah um, is, is, is a, uh, an obligation of Islam, and that's why it's an obligation on every Muslim to know there's a zakah. That's why it's an obligation. A Muslim cannot say, oh, I don't know how to pay zakah. They must, they must have the knowledge on how to pay zakah from your, on your money. And, that's, and if you don't know, it's very important for you to ask. You know, sometimes the paying zakah is uh, on you know, the money that you have is easy. You know, people know it's two point five percent every year, but still people don't know. What about jewelry? What about, do I pay zakah in gold, or do I pay zakah if I have a farm and it produces, uh, you know, produce? All of these things it's very important for a Muslim to know the ahkam al zakah so that they can give the uh, the the duty of. Uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their mind. But also Ramadan, fasting the month of Ramadan. Obviously, you know, so fasting the month of Ramadan and performing the Hajj if you can, uh, physically and financially. And this is very important for Muslims that they do not delay the Hajj. Do not delay the Hajj. You know, when we, when we had COVID and Hajj and Umrah were affected, you know, people didn't know whether we're going to go back to doing Hajj and Umrah uh, normal again. Okay, so it's very important for a Muslim to, to, to take advantage of their time, take advantage of their wealth before they become poor and their health before they, they become sick, their, 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 their youth become, before they become old. You know, don't delay Hajj and say, I'll, I'll perform Hajj when I get to 60. You know, who knows if you're going to get to 60 or not. But SubhanAllah, Hajj is getting expensive by the day. So, Every single person, as soon as you have the means to perform Hajj, do it immediately and do not delay the Hajj. So these are the, the, the first, the first, um, the first part of this Hadith where Jibreel Alayhi came and asked, asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about Islam. And in Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Jibreel Alayhi Wasallam asked about Islam, Islam, as we talked about all of these acts. These acts are the acts of the, uh, the Islam that the Prophet ﷺ has uh, mentioned in the hadith. Is the uh, is obviously part of Islam. These are the foundations of Islam. There are so many acts of Islam that you do with your with your hands, with your tongue, are also considered from the uh, uh, Islam. As the Prophet ﷺ says in the authentic hadith, and Muslim, and Salim and Muslimun and Lisanihi wa that a Muslim who is the definition of a Muslim who the other Muslims are safe from his hand and tongue. That means that you are, when you're dealing with your Muslim brothers and sisters, that you establish a special etiquette and behavior in controlling yourself and controlling your tongue and what you say to your Muslim brothers and sisters. And also, it is reported in the Sahih Bukhari of Muslim that a man came to the Prophet and said to him, What are you Islamic khayr? What acts of Islam are better and good? The Prophet sallallahu said to him, That you um, feed the poor and needy, and that you say, Assalamu alaikum, when you meet someone you know or you don't know. And this is a very important sunnah. To, if you know that this someone is a Muslim, 
is that you say assalamu alaikum. Is you say assalamu alaikum, um, and not just to the people you know, you say assalamu alaikum to the people you don't know. Um, and um, obviously, in a, in a non Muslim country, it's not always easy to identify Muslims. But you know, if you know that a person is a Muslim, and even that you don't know this person is from the Sunnah, that you say assalamu alaikum to that person. Then, when Jibreel السلام, came, um, asked the Prophet وسلم, to tell him about the Iman, the Prophet وسلم, said, You believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels and the books. We obviously believe in all the books before the Quran, uh, uh, all of these uh, books that were uh, revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the previous, previous prophets, we believe in them. And we are the only nation that believe in all the books. Alhamdulillah. Um, we obviously believe that had, there has been some deviation to these books, but we believe in the revelation on all the previous prophets before uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu In fact, this is the, from the foundation of Iman. So you cannot believe a Muslim, you cannot be a Muslim believer, unless you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Injil to Isa and believed, uh, revealed the, the Torah to Musa alayhi and Alhamdulillah, we are the only nation also that we believe in all the Prophets. We believe in all the Prophets from Adam alayhi salam until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Okay? And we believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam is the final Prophet. Okay? So, uh, we are, uh, we believe in Isa alayhi salam. And sometimes, you know, when you talk to Christians and, and you tell them that we believe in Jesus, some, some, some of them don't know that we believe in Isa alayhi salam. But it's, it's very important that you talk to uh, you know, the colleagues if you have a chance um, about the faith of the Muslims. I was once speaking to my colleagues a couple of years ago and they didn't know that Muslims believed in, in Jesus. Obviously we believe in Isa Alayhi Salaam in a different way. But it makes sense to them. When you tell them that we believe in Isa is a man, Allah it, it makes sense to them that Isa Alayhi Salaam is a man. Because they always have these Questions. How come Isa is, is, a, is a God and then the Son of God and he's making supplication to, to God in the Injil and then he died? How come a God dies? And all of these things, it's, it's very confusing to them. So when you tell them about Islam, and that in fact that we believe that Isa is a, is, a, is a prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a human being, it makes sense to them. So we believe in all the prophets and we believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is the final prophet. And that's why. <clears throat> Anyone would come and say there is a prophet after the Prophet وسلم, then this person is not a Muslim. If someone was to come and say there is a prophet like you know Mirza Ghulam Ahmed or you know whoever, if this if they say we believe that there is a prophet after the Prophet Muhammad and this person received a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this person does not be, uh, does not qualify to be a Muslim and is not buried with the Muslims, okay? Even though that this person might, you know, look like a Muslim, unless they believe that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the final prophet, there's no other prophets after Prophet Muhammad. This person is not, is not Muslim. When <clears throat> you believe that in the last day, obviously, even Hasan, Allah subhanahu wa taala will bring people to accountability. You know that Allah subhanahu wa taala is Rafur uh, Rahim, but also His Torment is severe. Allah says, Tell my servants, O Muhammad, that I am Ghafur uh, Rahim, I am merciful, I am ever forgiving. And tell them that my torment is the severe torment, severe punishment. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established Al Yawm al Akhir, the last day, so that He brings people to accountability. And you believe in the faith, in the good of the faith, and the bad of the faith. Now, believing in the faith, <coughs> obviously we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all the actions of the ibad, all the actions of the servants, of the people, before they do it. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what are you going to do and how are you going to act, and whether you be a Muslim or non Muslim, and what you're going to be doing in your life. All of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you free will. You can do whatever you want. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not force you to do a certain action. You choose. Okay? But 
your, you take the consequences of your actions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly how, what direction are you you're going to take. You know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and He knows our actions before we do it and knows which actions we're going to do it and what are the consequences of our actions. Okay? So this is the, the faith. But also, another dimension of believing in the faith is that whenever uh, something good falls upon you, or evil falls upon you, that you say Alhamdulillah. And this is the Ar-Ridha al qada So we believe in the Qada, uh, we believe in the Qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qadr, we believe in the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, we believe in the Qadr, and we are pleased with the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever, whatever, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees upon us, we, are, we should be pleased as Muslims. The Prophet says in the authentic hadith that it is amazing the affairs of the Muslim, the believer. If something good befalls upon him, he will say Alhamdulillah and it will be good for him. But also if something evil befalls upon him, if something bad happens to you, then you display sabr, you display patience and that will be good for you. So whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a tribulation or calamity, you say Alhamdulillah, you believe and you are pleased with the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? You have, you have someone in your family who passed away, or you have someone, uh, something bad happens to you. You don't say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why Allah you do this to me? You know, this is from the jaza. This is from the, the suwil adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from being um, ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So you believe in the qada, you believe in the qadr, you believe in the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are pleased with it. You know, you, you see our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine and you see their display of saying Alhamdulillah, uh, Inna Ilayhi Inna Rajeun in, in situations where subhanAllah you don't know what are you going to, to say or do if you are in this, in, if you are in their situation. But subhanAllah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them has given them iman and has given them the thawab and has given them the uh, the uh, the sabr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give them sabr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their pain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 give them uh, a reprieve from their suffering and what they're uh, going through. So, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the, the highest level of of, uh, of Islam, which is Ihsan, excellence in prayers. Now, the, why did Jibreel السلام, asked all these questions? Obviously, the answer comes in the end of the hadith where the Prophet is saying to Umar ibn Khattab that Jibreel has come to teach you deen, the Islam, the Iman, and the Ihsan. What is Ihsan, and why do we aim for Ihsan? Islam teaches you to always aim for the most high of things. You know, the Prophet وسلم, teaches you. When you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, they ask for Firdaus, Firdaus al A'la, the highest level. The Prophet وسلم, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches you when you uh, uh, are a Muslim that you aim for Ihsan, the excellence. What is the Ihsan? Is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are conscious that you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or if you can't get to that level, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Now, if you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you, then you will be restrained in what you do. You'll be avoiding the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll be doing the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and you have this feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. And that's why the, the, the worshipping of uh, fasting, that's why fasting, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said about fasting, is that uh, the hadith of Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all the acts of the son of Adam is for them, except when it comes to fasting, it's for me, and I will reward him accordingly. Why? Because fasting is a, a particular ibadah that teaches you to monitor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and teaches you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is monitoring you. You know, fasting, no one can tell whether you ate or drank. No one can tell except you. It's between, if you have closed doors, you and in Ramadan, no one would see if you, you know, eat or drink. But you don't do it because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Uh, when you get up for Qiyamul Layl, Qiyamul Layl at night to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one is watching. 
except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you do all these acts, and that's what Qiyamul Layl is better performed at home. That's what Qiyamul Layl is always better performed at home because it is best for uh, this uh, Ihsan, it's best for uh, prevention of showing off. It is a, a relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever you do any acts that you can do in secret, it's best because that means you're not showing off. And also that means that you are reaching the state of ihsan because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And you want to do it even though there's no one around you, you want to do it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the level of ihsan. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also says in the authentic hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when you do something that you do the best of something. When you do any act that you do the best of this act, whether it's your work, whether it's your any field that you're doing, and obviously in the ibadah. In the ibadah, when you're doing the ibadah, you reach the level of ihsan. When you're doing any other acts, you, you also do reach the level of excellence. The Islam teaches you and doing anything that you do, you do it in the best possible way. And then you believe um, um, uh, So this is the, 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 uh, the level of Ihsan Which is a level that every Muslim should aspire to And always thrive to achieve this state of Ihsan Inshallah we'll stop here um, So inshallah next week we'll continue this hadith Jazakum uh, If someone has any questions uh, Please a question obviously the disclaimer that I'll refer you to Sheikh Saeed if I don't know the answer. Otherwise